So it's recently been reported that The Flash is the biggest box office flop for any superhero film ever. As of making this video, it's been reported that they will be making a $200 million loss. So it seems like if this film went straight to streaming, like on HBO Max, and they did zero marketing whatsoever, it technically would have been more profitable. Also, if they released it to cinemas and spent zero dollars on marketing, and then not a single person in the world bought a ticket, it would have been more profitable. To any sane person, it's not really a surprise that the film flopped. Ezra's escapades over the last three years have been very very intense, but also really confusing and, and hard to keep up with. But for the general population, it's left a poor taste in their mouth. I mean, with the Hawaii arc, the gun obsession, the allegations of grooming 12-year-olds, burglary, assault, fostering a cult-like environment, the fact that they believe themselves to be the Native American Messiah. And there's even more than this. There, there's a lot to cover here. We'll get to all of it. Now, lately, there is definitely a trend with DC movies being box office disappointments. Flash follows films such as Shazam! Fury of the Gods, Black Adam, The Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman 1984, and The Birds of Prey, The Emancipation of Harley Quinn. Notably here with The Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman, they did release during COVID. And because of this, I believe they were also released straight to streaming at the same time. So that is kind of understandable. The Suicide Squad is actually a really good film and I, I highly recommend it. But out of all these films, The Flash is the biggest hit to Warner Brothers' pocket so far. And definitely a big reason behind this is regarding all the controversies surrounding Ezra Miller. And there are a lot of controversies. The controversy section of Ezra's Wikipedia page is by far longer than any other section. Even half of the personal life section is dedicated to these controversies. And because of this, they didn't really do any press for the movie. It seems naturally the higher-ups didn't want this looming over the film. So most of the press promotion fell on the shoulders of the actor playing Supergirl. I guess Michael Keaton was busy. This whole thing has been incredibly unfortunate for Warner Brothers, considering Ezra Miller plays the two main characters in the film The Flash, being two alternate versions of Barry Allen. Literally, they played the two main roles. I believe the only real promotion that Miller did for the film was walking down the red carpet on the opening night, and they didn't answer questions or anything like that, they simply just posed for photos. I think it's worth noting going into this that I did really used to like Ezra Miller. I was a big fan of the film Perks of Being a Wallflower. In saying this, I also do think they were extremely miscast as The Flash. I get the angle they were trying to go for, but for me, it never really felt like the character. I think Ezra Miller must have something on a Warner Brothers executive, considering they got a main role in Warner Brothers' two biggest franchises, being obviously DC and also... Uh, Wizard World, whatever the hell that Harry Potter franchise is called. I thought they died in the Fantastic Beast film, and then I found out that they came back for the next two. How'd they get to show up in the other two films? Please don't actually tell me, I don't really care. It's worth noting that the Fantastic Beast franchise is also considered to be a bit of a flop. That definitely didn't have anything to do with Ezra Miller, though. However, with The Flash, I think we can argue that they were definitely the main contributing factor to the failure. There's definitely other reasons why, but specifically today, I do want to talk about Ezra Miller. We're going to be taking a look at that very public timeline of events. Now, I want to preface all this stuff by saying this is clearly a very unwell individual. This is obviously someone who needs some serious help. But with the way Hollywood operates a lot of the time, rather than help an individual, they facilitate an environment where these things are encouraged. And it's only when things escalate and it's hurting their bottom line do they get involved. Also, everything we talk about today is alleged. Take it all with a grain of salt. I've done my best to use reputable sources for all this information, but a lot of it is witness accounts, and a lot of this is ongoing. Also, the sheer amount of stuff makes it really quite confusing to understand, so I've done my best to streamline and simplify things in a nice bite-sized video. Hopefully bite-sized. I don't know how long this video is going to be. So in April of 2020, Ezra Miller chokes a woman outside a bar. Now, this was a very viral clip, so I imagine you've already seen it. I can't show it here because it is technically violent content. But essentially, from the video clip, there's a woman goofing around a bit, and Ezra says, Do you want to fight? Is that what you do? Before grabbing her neck and throwing her to the ground. That's where the clip ends. Again, it was a very viral clip, but it's really hard to tell what's going on there. It's such a weird short clip, and there's no real context given at the time, so a lot of people dismissed it. This was until two years later, where the victim gave context to Variety. So Ezra was to begin shooting the new Fantastic Beast movie, when COVID shut down the production. So during this time, Ezra became a regular at several Iceland pubs. So the person in the video saw Ezra Miller at a pub, and she noticed that Ezra's sandal-clad feet were all scratched and scraped up. She inquires what happened, and Ezra claims that this was from a fight. She began to walk away, but turned around and joked, but just so you know, I could take you in a fight. Miller replied, do you really want to fight? And the woman told them 
to meet her in the smoking area in two minutes. Now, because this was a joke, the woman did not go to the smoking area. So Miller confronted her outside. I think it's just fun and games, but then it wasn't. All of a sudden, they're on top of me, choking me, still screaming in my face. My friend who's filming sees they're obviously not joking, and it's actually serious. So he stops filming and pushes them off me, as they're still trying to fight me. Two guy friends of mine are actually holding Miller back as Miller is screaming, This is what you wanted. This is what you wanted. So then the woman said that Miller spat in her face multiple times. Now, at the time, that was especially crazy because this was pre-COVID vaccine. This is like literally the height of COVID. Everyone's freaking the hell out about that. So then the bartender comes over and grabs Miller. This is now a quote from the bartender. Miller grabs grabs me by the throat as I'm trying to usher them out the back door and tells me they're not leaving. They proceeded to spit in my face several times, so with the final push, I closed and locked the door. The bartender then had to sprint to the front door to lock that as well to make sure Ezra didn't come back in, which they tried to do. Apparently before this incident, Ezra was quite well liked in the community. However, that's not the only altercation they had in this pub. Prior to this, Ezra assaulted a man. They got a guy in a headlock and then slapped him, but it was mostly shrugged off. Miller apologized and they were allowed to subsequently return to the pub. So you would think after this very public incident that maybe they would not go ahead with the Flash movie, seen as though it hadn't entered production yet. Well, idiot, you were wrong. In fact, it wouldn't even enter production until another year. It was still in pre-production at this phase. They hadn't even secured Michael Keaton to play Batman. Why they decided to go ahead with this film is truly beyond me, but I guess they must have thought that this would be an isolated incident. And considering the minimal backlash, Ezra had not quite yet ruined their reputation. Now, in April of 2021, the Flash did begin filming, and in October, it finished. Now, I did read that there was some dramas on the set involving Ezra, but that's all they are, rumors. They were never really publicly talked about, so I don't really want to talk about them here. In January of 2022, Ezra posts on Instagram a message for the KKK, specifically to the Beulahville chapter of North Carolina. They said, look, if you all want to die, I suggest kissing yourselves with your own guns, okay? Otherwise, keep doing exactly what you're doing right now. And you know what I'm talking about, then you know We'll do it for you, if that's what you really want. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye. It's worth noting that reportedly there is no KKK activity in that area. That's coming from, like, law enforcement officials. I don't know who you'd rather believe, law enforcement or Ezra Miller. Now, this was a very public statement, and it left a lot of people very confused. However, it's not entirely problematic. It's just weird. It's what happened next, where it starts getting blurry for a lot of people, and events kind of blur together. Simply because there was a lot coming out at once. In March of 2022, Ezra Miller lands in Hawaii. Throughout the month, they are the subject of 10 calls to the police for various minor incidents. It's around here that sometime Ezra Miller meets a couple who invite Miller to stay at their hotel. They're gonna come back into play later. On March 28th, Miller was arrested and charged for disorderly conduct and harassment at a karaoke bar. They were apparently agitated by people singing at the karaoke bar. They lunged at a man playing darts. They also grabbed the microphone off a woman who was singing. Mid-song, too. Miller claims this outburst actually happened because they were accosted by a bad German World War II soldier. If, if you catch my drift, what I'm trying to say there. I don't think we're meant to say that word on YouTube. However, there's no evidence that that specific altercation happened. Miller also filmed the entire incident, claiming that they were going to use the footage as NFT crypto art. The worst crime of all. Now, they got out on $500 bail, which was paid by the husband of the couple who we talked about just previously. Now, how did Ezra repay the favor? They went back to the hostel, threatened the couple, and then stole the wife's passport and the husband's wallet. Ezra allegedly said to the couple, I will bury you and your silly wife. The couple later asked for a restraining order, but they eventually dropped the case. Also in Hawaii, on April 19th, Miller was arrested for second degree assault when they threw a chair at a woman. This was a private event and they threw the chair because someone asked them to leave the event. This resulted in the woman getting a half an inch cut on her forehead. So for now, this brings the Hawaii arc to an end. Ultimately, as far as I can tell, all that happens is that they were fined $500 for the karaoke bar incident. Maybe some of this was settled away from the public eye, but that's just speculation. There's no real way of, of knowing that. Just a possibility that I'm throwing out there. Just a slight hope in my heart that they were held accountable for their actions. So believe it or not, things get much worse and much more troubling. In June of 2022, Ezra Miller is accused of grooming a minor. In the Standing Rock Sioux Tribal Court, Chase Ionize and Sarah Jumping Eagle requested a temporary order of protection against Miller. Miller, on behalf of their daughter, Tokata Ionize. Now, who is Tokata Ionize? Well, Ezra Miller met them in 2016 when Ezra was 23 years old and Tokata was 12. The parents requested the order because, I quote, of Miller's violence, intimidation, threat of violence, fear, paranoia, delusions, and drugs to hold sway over their child. So again, Miller in 2016 meets 12-year-old Tokata Ionize. They met each other while protesting the Dakota Pipeline. And ever since then, 
Ryan, Miller has been in frequent contact, promising to help her music career. Not sketchy at all. In 2017, Miller flew to Carter out to the set of the crime's Grindelwald. It's here that court documents allege that Miller attempted to sleep in the same bed as Takata. To clarify, at this point in time, she was 14 years old. But Miller was prevented from doing this by a chaperone. Also worth noting is that Miller paid for Takata to go to college. But in 2021, she dropped out of school and her parents claimed that this was in order to follow Ezra Miller. Takata stayed with Miller on one of Miller's friend's farms. It was on one of these trips that Miller and several house guests had to call up Takata's parents. This was to inform them that Takata was incapacitated from LSD that she had taken four days prior. Again, this is all alleged. This is from court documents. When the parents arrived, Takata was incoherent and screaming to the point of losing their voice. She had bruises on her arms and cheek and didn't have a phone, bank card, driver's license or keys on them. Someone at the farm alleged that the bruise on Takata's cheek came from when Miller pinned Takata to the ground after failing to answer a question. However, Takata alleges that she gave herself the bruise or maybe that it happened when her parents dragged her out of the house. Something that the parents deny ever doing. Takata then spent three weeks detoxing at her parents' home before running away with Miller again, first to LA and then to Hawaii, which is where the subsequent Hawaii arc took place. When the parents brought all this to light, Takata made a statement on Instagram, essentially saying that all the parents' allegations were false and that they were mentally stable, able to make their own decisions. It's worth noting that at this point, Takata is above the age of 18. Now, the parents countered this statement by saying that Takata doesn't have a phone anymore, so it couldn't have possibly been her that made the statement on her Instagram. So, Takata came out with a video message saying, yes, they don't have a phone anymore, but they stand by their statement. It's worth noting that, in my opinion, in the video message that Takata sent was very strange. It's very slowly spoken and very unnatural sounding, but that's just my subjective opinion. But yeah, Takata claims that they weren't groomed, which is exactly what someone who had been groomed would say. Like, by definition, grooming is when someone builds a relationship, trust, and emotional connection with a child or young person so they can manipulate and exploit them. So yeah, in my opinion, it absolutely seems like this person was groomed. The information I'm about to give you comes from the organization Bravehearts. I just found it in a quick Google search. Grooming may take a number of forms, building the child's trust, whether that be using presents, special attention, treats, spending time together and playing games. Favoritism, where the offender treats the child as an adult, treating them differently and making them feel like a unique friend, making the child feel more special than others. Gaining the trust of the child's parents or carers, isolation from family and friends. Intimidation and secrecy, where the offender may use coercion, testing the waters or boundary violation, and then shaping the child's perceptions. To me, if we're to believe that all the allegations out there currently are true, then almost, if not all of the boxes here have been checked. Someone named Oliver Ignatius, who was a longtime music collaborator of Ezra Miller, has come out and said some things as well about this specific situation. They witnessed Miller being verbally abusive in both Hawaii and Vermont towards Takata. We haven't talked about Vermont yet, but we'll get to it. Also going back to Hawaii, apparently Ezra Miller confiscated Takata's phone from her. And that's where allegedly Ezra Miller pressured Takata into changing her name to Gibson. Also worth noting, they go by both the names Takata and Gibson. I'm not deliberately calling them the wrong name. Takata claims that her and Miller came up with the name Gibson together. Now for context, Miller owns a farm in Vermont. And here again, according to Ignatius, Miller allegedly hid Takata's phone from her again and at one point screamed at her for putting on makeup. Ignatius said he recalled Miller saying, what the F are you doing? putting on this effing clown paint. Takata completely disputes this claim. She says, that was queer dialogue about a badly applied rouge on my part, which I appreciated. I think the fact a catty comment made by a queer person about makeup being considered abuse is actually quite homophobic rhetoric. Take for that what you will. Now regarding this court order, law enforcement obviously had to serve it to Ezra Miller, but they were unable to locate them. This is when Miller publicly mocked them on Instagram, posting images such as, you cannot touch me, I am in another universe, and message from another dimension. Now, the grooming allegations do not end there. On June 16th, 2022, a mother and her daughter were granted a temporary harassment prevention order against Miller. According to the mother, a child, and a neighbor, Miller showed up at the family's house unannounced, unexpected, wearing a bulletproof vest and brandishing a gun before pestering the child and grabbing the child's hips, allegedly. Now, according to the mother, Miller had known the family since February at this point. And according to the mother, Miller had taken an interest in the child because of their style and maturity level and had offered to start a clothing line with the child and fund their attendance to a design school. Miller also considered the child to be a powerful mystical being who would be lucky to have Ezra to guide and protect them. Ezra had also previously shown up dressed as a cowboy and attempted to buy horses for the child. 
allegedly. Now, Miller's attorney denies all this. They say that all of the interactions that happened were initiated by the mother, and that Ezra Miller only briefly interacted with the child. Now, recently, and I mean within the last couple of weeks, this harassment order has expired, which Ezra Miller has addressed now on Instagram, calling it an egregious misuse of the protective order system and saying, protective orders are meant to provide for individuals, families, and children who are in danger. They are not meant to be used as weapons by those seeking attention or some sort of personal vengeance when there are people in true and dire need of these services. I have been unjustly and directly targeted by an individual who the facts have shown has a history of such manipulative and destructive action. So this is really a she said, they said case and we don't really know what's happened here. Now, going back to that farm in Vermont, again, here, there is a lot to cover. It's here Miller had been housing a woman that he met in Hawaii and her three children. These children go from ages one to three years old. And I believe they moved in sometime mid-April of 2022. This was apparently to give protection to the woman and give her shelter from her ex-husband. Honestly, this sounds very good on paper. Now, it also appears that Miller had quite a lot of people staying on the farm at, at this point in time. And several sources say that there are just guns and ammunition littered all over this property to the point where they are easily accessible to the children. And when I say easily accessible, I mean really easily accessible. Allegedly, the one-year-old found a bullet and, and had it in its mouth. Assault rifles literally propped up on stuffed animals. Allegedly. There's also allegations of heavy marijuana use on the property. Specifically, marijuana usage in the unventilated bedrooms of the young children, with allegedly Ezra Miller blowing marijuana smoke into the infant child's face. Now, in August, the police showed up to the property in order to serve her an emergency care order to take away the children from the home. However, Miller told the police that the woman hadn't stayed there in at least the last two months. This contradicted the information that the police had. They had evidence that she'd been in the house much more recently than that. Some of the evidence included her own social media profiles where she'd been posting from inside the house pretty recently. Many people who stayed at this farm in Vermont have come out about their experiences and have specifically talked about the strange things that Ezra Miller discussed there, with several individuals corroborating that Miller claimed to be Jesus, the devil, and the next messiah. Specifically, Miller saw themselves as the messiah of the Native American people. Miller believed that their relationship with Takata was meant to bring about the apocalypse, because apparently Takata is a Native American spider goddess, who, along with Ezra Jesus Christ Miller, was meant to bring about an indigenous revolution. Now, in case you were wondering, notably, Ezra Miller does not have any Native American ancestry whatsoever, but they claim to walk this world with indigenous humility and a kind of spiritual awareness. Now, notably, this has been disputed by, you know, probably every indigenous person ever. Now, in the same month that that was going on, Ezra Miller got accused of burglary. Ezra Miller was allegedly caught on surveillance camera stealing several bottles of alcohol from a home. Now, later on, it came out that this apparently was a former childhood friend of Ezra Miller, and Miller believed that they were able to stop by at any time because of this. And they claimed that they didn't steal any old bottles of alcohol, they claimed that they stole rice wine for cooking. Eventually for this, they did plead guilty to trespassing. Because of that, the burglary charges were dropped. It's worth noting that at this point for months now, Ezra Miller had been driving around wearing a bulletproof vest, brandishing a gun. This is because they believed that they were getting hunted by the KKK and also the FBI. Also, according to witness accounts, Ezra Miller believed that the Freemasons were sending demons after them in order to prevent the previously mentioned apocalypse. Now, finally, in August of 2022, Ezra Miller did come out with a statement saying that they were finally getting treatment for their complex mental health issues and they were committed to getting back to a healthy, safe, and productive stage of their life. And then finally, everything went quiet until June 2023 when The Flash came out. And as we all know now, it bombed. And yeah, look, honestly, I think even disregarding all this stuff, I do truly believe that the Flash would have bombed anyway. Like, not even The Rock could save Black Adam, and he's arguably one of the biggest Hollywood stars in the world. But one would think, surely, after everything that's happened here, that they would think twice about releasing this film, about giving this person another platform. You don't have to be a genius to see that this movie was never gonna do well. But, at the point of almost all these controversies, The Flash had already been filmed. And Warner Brothers currently is not doing well at all. I think there's something like $50 billion in debt. Like, they are desperate. And at this point, they're just kind of throwing stuff at the wall and hoping it sticks. They were really banking on the fact that there's such a fast news cycle now, and they hoped that within a year people would forget about all this stuff. Which, I think for the most part, people did, kind of. Like, everyone in their brain knows Ezra Miller bad. But at least in my life, people didn't know exactly what they did. I really hope this starts more of a trend with Hollywood being more selective in their casting choices. I know Marvel's having some issues with some of their casting choices at the moment, most notably with Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors has some very public allegations going on right now, but also apparently there's been a lot of stuff behind the scenes for 
for years. Again, this is all allegations and I, I don't really know what the hell's going on there. Again, it's another situation of me knowing a celebrity is maybe bad, but I don't know why. But I imagine Marvel's really rethinking the whole Kang Dynasty thing now. I think when we take everything into consideration, being the controversies, the crimes and allegations, as well as the terrible box office performance for The Flash, I think it's a safe bet that Ezra's career is over forever. And maybe this is for the better for Ezra Miller themselves. A calmer life might suit them and, and get them the time to get better. For me, the worst part is that I know in my heart that if hypothetically The Flash did really well, they would have absolutely brought Ezra Miller back in the future. Amidst everything that's happened here, if the money was there, this person would continue being one of the headliners for one of the biggest franchises on Earth. And look, I know and understand that this is all caused by mental health problems, and I really do hope that Ezra Miller seeks treatment and gets better. Not only for themselves, but for everyone around them. But at the end of the day, there are people who should not be in a position of power. Abuse of power manifests in many forms. It's not always just some big, gross, ugly Hollywood executive conniving in their office rubbing their hands together. Sometimes it is just someone who is completely out of control. Almost all the behavior they were able to get away with is directly attributed to the fact they had power over so many individuals. Whether it was promising them careers or housing them or flying them across the globe, the fact that they can walk into any pub on the planet and make friends because of the fact that they are a celebrity and people already know them. And mental health or no, all we are as people really is our actions. And there should still be accountability there. Mental health is not a get out of jail free card. Except sometimes when it literally is, I guess. So yeah, at no point am I gonna defend them, but I will do my best to understand. As always, I would love to know your thoughts on the entire situation, whether you agree with me on anything or not. Also, have you seen The Flash? Are you gonna see The Flash? I'm not gonna see The Flash, but I would like to know how it was. I have heard mixed reviews. Also remember that every like on this video holds the apocalypse off by one extra day. Let me know if you enjoyed this and if you learned anything. Don't groom kids, and I'll see you next video. Uh, cheers. Don't talk to me before I've had my morning coffee either. That's the other rule.